Hello everyone, Ecotech here and in this video I'll run you through some of the progress on my project and uh, mainly it'll consist in a power supply adapter for the uh, custom LED lights that I'm uh, working on and soon planning on releasing. I have a website available if you want to know more about when this these lights will be available to, to purchase. I think it'll be in a few weeks. But so you can see that the the crops that I'm growing here are doing pretty well. Uh, I have uh, one pepper here. My strawberries are actually pretty excited. I might have my first successful pollinize, pollinization. So if we look at here, this strawberry, I think this is growing into a fruit. So really excited about my first indoor strawberry. There's more peppers back here. I have, my basil is doing fine and tasty. This is my first a successful growth of tasty mint. I've always been able to grow mint, but never something tasteful. And I think it's due to the fact that now I have enough power in my lights. In the past, I would always run the, uh, I would only have barinas, so the typical barinas and uh, the, the sun blasters, right? If it focuses, yeah, sun blaster and I wasn't, uh, getting enough power to get tasteful mint. Now I am. And here I wanted to show you this. I find this funny. It looks like, look, it's a it's a pepper in a pot, like a tiny pot. I, I love this. Like the cracky method, hydroponic is really funny. You get like, look, a pepper in a tiny pot. It looks weird. I love it. Anyways, um, I'm not growing many microgreens. You can see this weird experiment where under there I have a bag of water as weight and here you have peas. On the other side, sunflowers. Let's see, yeah, sunflowers. And this tray is aluminum tray with holes. The experiment here is that I'm trying to grow this without any media. And in the past, all my experiments uh, were really hard and gave mixed results. Reason being that when you're not growing with the media, getting the the humidity down in the roots uh, consistent is really hard. They always end up drying up and dying. But now that I have this automated system, the watering system where the input water is here and the output is through this bell siphon with an overflow, I can set my flood and drain to be every hour or so and hopefully that'll be enough water to not dry up the roots and get a successful first microgreen media-less growth. And uh, we'll see. So, sorry for all this side, side discussions. I just wanted to share the plants, but if we go to the power supply. So in the past, I've uh, tested this one and a few others. So there's all of these three. There's another one running in my system right now, this other meanwhile. And uh, I've selected this one as the final one for my project and designed a 3D enclosure, 3D printed enclosure. So this white part, you can see all the revisions here. So it's, if you look here, it's a two part system where you have this, which sits on your PCB. So I don't have all the components on this PCB, but this sits over it. Then the whole thing fits in here. So you have this now sub assembly and this just slides in like so. Look, oh, if I can align it one hand, I did this in the past. Come on, cooperate. Okay, anyways, it fits in, you screw it in and then you have your power, your daisy chain, other outputs. Uh, typical socket uh, switch and your connectors. So if we look here, I'm running this one right now for my plants. Uh, there we go. And uh, let me turn it off so that you can see. Come on there, perfect. Okay, so you can see that the power comes in here. There's a space for a fuse down here with the replacement, another socket so you can daisy chain all your uh, shelves one after the other and you don't have to run power from the um, from one shelf all the way to your wall. No, no, I, I hated that. So I included a power socket, your switch here to turn on and off. And then here is where you connect the ribbon cable. You have two, so you can divide the power a bit more evenly. And if we follow this ribbon cable, it wraps around and connects over there. If you can see my finger over there to this, uh, 
LED board and then daisy chains all the way through. And so you can see once I turn flip this switch, they all turn on. And another feature of this power supply is if I grab my screwdriver, sorry about that, moving a lot. So I have a, a small screwdriver. I can set it over here. There we go, now you can see. And I can increase the brightness or decrease the brightness depending on uh, all the requirements I have or like if you set your shelf space differently, you can now take a measurement with your uh, par meter or or flux meter or any light meter and, and adjust it to the level you want. Um, it'll all be set to a fixed level when I ship them. By the way, I have now a uh, website with more information on these lights. And if you want more information on when they'll be available, please register on this website. And thanks to all of you who uh, left me feedback uh, on the previous videos, give me good constructive criticism on things that I could have included. And I'm taking the feedback and incorporating it. So, so when when these lights will be available, um, I'll post it on the website. On another note, I've been working on this mess. So if we look here, there's a, like, it's like a spider web of, of like madness where you have few microcontrollers, wires everywhere, sockets, and this is not, uh, man, I've like, it's not reliable. I've bumped this and the lights would turn off and I'm like, great, what happened? And so I think there's a few loose connections. This was a first rough prototype. And I have since, so here you have a few experiments that I ran, previous experiments. So I ran uh, some experiments on some drivers and whatnot. So if we, I think I have a board here. Yeah, exactly. So if you look at this board, I ran a few experiments and came up with a better design and I'm replacing this whole thing with a, uh, a new board that will automate all the watering system and outlets for... Uh, it'll mainly be for the fans because I plan on having a, an, an iteration where all the lights have the uh, internet functionalities but right now all, all these sockets are controlled through my Google calendar and I can set all the schedules for the lights and whatnot and this hardware was a good proof of concept and I'm moving ahead with a new PCB. Uh, another PCB I've been working on is uh, for the daisy chain the watering system. So if we look these are the solenoid valves um, that I'm using over here right they're just hooked up like this to my watering system and although they're working right now the the wiring so if we look at the wiring here is again a bit of a mess and there has to be a better way right and yes the answer is yes always there's always better and this board will help me uh, wire manage and uh, add the connectors and whatnot so this board fits on on here and you would solder it and there's a, a connector that lets you select uh, the channel on which you want this solenoid to be on. So these are, there's eight switches and you would be able to say, okay, this one is on channel one. And then you would program your controller and say channel one is all the, maybe it's the entire shelf and you have all the shelf set to one. So when you say water one, the entire shelf uh, gets all the solenoids trigger and they get watered. Or you could be like only the shelves level one or one and this is level two, channel two and so on. So you could set it however you want and daisy chain all the solenoids and it would work. So yeah, another thing that um, throughout time I've validated is the use of these small tubes instead of, of a bigger one. So I ran both big and small. You can see a bigger one here and a smaller. And my reasoning behind going small is that although you're limiting the flow, because you have higher pressure and more um, faster water moving through this pipe, every time you're watering your system, it it's, it's like a pressure washer almost where it cleans all the inner walls of the tube and you're not left with uh, growth and you can see that bigger tubes this is happening you have growth happening and it's not cleaning it and both of these tubes were installed at the same time there we go the the fan kicked in uh, no actually that's my 
that is my air filter uh, let me quickly I'll disconnect it sorry for the audio there we go yeah the uh, thanks to the automated system great adding uh, noise to my video and you can see that uh, you have the same thing here the small tube is clean and the big tube is dirty so the idea of running these small valves uh, not, not only work in terms of uh, being able to control it but the uh, hygiene uh, aspect that I was wondering about is proving to be good the uh, watering system has been working really well for the past now it's been a month that I've been running it, although I wouldn't fully, uh, as you can see, I'm not growing all the time, but I've still been running it a lot. And uh, funny story, I should have recorded it, but the idea behind my grow tent is was mainly as a safety redundancy. So since I have high pressure here, I would typically close this door and you can close the entire grow tent, right? And so if there's a leak, uh, since it's high pressure, it, it would like squirt everywhere and these walls would catch it and it would fall at the bottom and at the bottom you have a tray so if you look at this grow tent right this is the exterior but there's another tray in it right you could you could raise this and this tray is uh, waterproof and what happened the other possibility was that a one of the drains would not drain uh, where it should and that's what happened this uh, I should make this tube longer and make it go in the in my reservoir which is this bucket and so the story being that this bucket got moved and this tube just the automated system kicked in at five in the morning they filled they drained all good but they drained it on this floor and the good thing is that this tray just caught all the water and the water didn't end up on this apartment floor and no damage like all the water got contained in here so all good so a lot of good news i'm really excited progress is a bit slower than i would hope it's just that having a full-time engineering job on the on the well it's not even on the side this is my side project it's just making me spend not as much time as i want on these projects uh, but hopefully that'll, that'll change soon as I'm trying to to make, um, to organize myself to be full time on this project. So yeah, if you stuck until the end, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate everyone who's leaving a good comment or the thumbs up. Um, thanks for all the feedback. Take care and uh, see you next time.